Hi, I'm Frankie, and in this video, I'll share how you can configure full text search for your Azure AI search resource. Now to be clear, full text search is more of traditional search where you search based on keyword. There might be some fuzzy matching, some relevance involved, but there's no vectors, and it's not ideal for AI agent solutions. But this is great for if you're searching a product catalog or if you're on some sort of search engine and you need to search based on keyword or for your application that needs to search by keyword for a specific product or some sort of category, things like that. So I'm in my Azure AI search resource. Let's start by uh, going to import data where we can see we need to import from a data source. This is gonna be the wizard we use when we are setting up our index our indexer, which will do mapping from our data source to our index. So now we need a data source. Uh, we need a blob storage account, or we could use uh, something else, but we'll use blob storage account in this example. Right now, since we don't have a blob storage account, let's create that. So in our resource group, we don't have a storage account. Let's create one. We'll go to create within the resource group. We'll type in storage account. create a storage account. We're going to put in some basic info here. SA AIS East US2 because that is the uh, actual region it will be in. Sticking with my naming standard here. So we have basic blob storage. We're using this for AI ultimately. Standard performance, we'll make this locally redundant because it's cheaper. And then we will review and create. No need to get into the weeds on the storage account. There's a lot you can do, but I'm okay with the defaults for what we're doing here. For reference, while this is being created, what we're going to be uploading to our storage account is this list of JSON files, which is each one of these JSON files is a product in the fictional Frankie's Bakery that I have where we sell cookies and brownies and breads and all kinds of goodies. Uh, each one of these JSON files is a product. It looks like this. Here's an example with just a, a description, some categories, product ID, ingredients, price, things that we can easily map and uh, understand for uh, the way uh, we can search for things in Azure AI Search. So it's just a list of these. That's what we're going to be uploading, all 20 of those. Our deployment is complete. Let's go to our resource. We'll create a new container, block containers, add container. Let's call it Frankie's Bakery Product Catalog. We'll create it. We'll go into this, select Upload. Oh, looks like it needs to load again. Let's give that another try. Might be going too fast. Go to there, go to Upload. There we go. bring in all those JSON files, upload them. Now we have all of our JSON files with uh, each of those different products within our Frankie's Bakery product catalog. Now let's head back to our AI search resource where we'll start filling out this wizard. I'll choose Azure Blob Storage. At this point, you choose the scenario that you're targeting, which will determine the type of wizard that you continue going through. If I was going to set up a new AI search with uh, an indexer, an index, uh, a skill set. I wanted to use vectors and embeddings for an AI agent. I might choose RAG, multimodal RAG. If you have images that you also need to understand uh, uh, with an AI model that can understand images, you might choose multimodal RAG. We are only using full, te full text search, which is keyword search. This is not going to evolve adding another AI model that is going to create vectors. It's simply going to map from the data source 
uh, to the index. And so there's not any type of AI enrichment, any type of special skills that are necessary. So we won't have a skill set. We're just doing something more basic in this one. I'll choose my storage account. Choose my blob storage container. And if you wanted to get more granular with the folder, you could do, do that here. We're just gonna use everything within the container, so I won't specify another subfolder. When it comes to parsing, this is gonna be important depending on the type of files that you have in that container. By default, it's just going to bring everything in. It's gonna to try to figure out best it can what to use. We want it to be really specific, so the files we have are not uh, you know, just generic PDFs or anything like that. We have specific JSON files, so we want the indexer to be able to parse these files are JSON, so that's what we'll choose, the parsing mode. Enable deletion tracking. This is for if you want to update your index if you remove items from your Azure Blob storage container. For example, if I have the list of 20 products and I'm searching through products on my application, but now I want to remove a product from my product catalog, I might delete it from my Blob storage container, which will be deleted in the using the soft delete feature that is enabled in the blob storage account and then my index will get updated to remove that product if i enable deletion tracking because the indexer will then understand hey that that item has been soft deleted in blob storage let's update our index to not include that item that has been removed i won't select that now authenticate using managed identity. If you don't want to use API keys for your AI search resource to uh, interact with your storage account, you can use managed identity. This is recommended for production. I won't click it now because I just want to keep things more simple. If you want to enrich your data, you could use AI models that will add uh, additional features to enrich the data. If you want to extract certain entities, locations, people, you know, phrases, uh, you know, change the way things are formatted with the text, you have that option. Again, keeping things simple, we won't do that. You can see the way your fields are going to be mapped from your data source, both the actual content itself and also the metadata into your index field. So this is what your index is gonna look like. These are the index field types. And if you want to change the way you can query that data, the fields that are available, there's things to make them more searchable. These three dots here, we click configure. If you want to make them filterable, sortable, uh, you know, faceable, if you are trying to get a list of the products and quantities for some sort of sorting um, page on your application, you can change these here. Keep in mind when you add these, it makes your index bigger sometimes a little slower. So by default, most of them are not enabled. In this wizard, you might not enable them unless you really need them. If you want more of those, maybe you'll set up your index in a more of a, uh, an SDK environment or using a REST API. Since that's looking good, we'll move on to the indexing, indexing schedule. So uh, right now this is set to run on its own one time. You could set this up to run periodically. Remember when it comes to the cost of your AI search resource, you pay for your partitions and your replicas, and you'll only pay any additional costs if there are AI enrichments or enhancements using AI models where you need to pay for the input and output tokens. So it doesn't cost you anything extra to have your AI search resource index on a regular basis. And keep in mind too, by default, your indexer will only actually index uh, items that are new. So it, if you run, have it run periodically and you don't add anything new to your blob storage, it just runs very quickly because it doesn't find any new documents. But it'll only pick up the new documents if you add them. I'll disable Semantic Ranker, but just so you're aware of what it is, Semantic Ranker is a form of search that allows your text or data to be searchable based on the semantics of the words themselves, not just the keywords alone. So there is additional complexity that gets added there, but it also helps your AI search solution better rank the types of results coming back based on the semantics and the meaning and intent of a query uh, and not only just the keyword. 
All right, now let's create a name, full text, we'll call it full text search. This is the name of our index. And we'll create it. This start searching will take us to our search explorer where I can hit search and see all of my items coming back. So I had 20 items that I uploaded. I can see there's 20. Only some fields are coming back, but if I go to fields, I can see the different types of things available. You can see the filterable, sortable, all the way to searchable are more grayed out. These are immutable and you can't change them after your index is created. If you did want to change them, you'd want to take a look at this JSON file for your index. You could take this, um, copy it, you could use it in an SDK and you could create a new index where the items that you need to be true are true. Um, the retrievable is always available to change because this just decides what comes back within your actual queries. So if I check all those and I save, I can see now in my search explorer that more data comes back. If I didn't want a lot of these, I could remove all of these and just have something like the title and description come back. Save this, search explore, search and see just the, the title, ID, and subscription that are returned. When you're ready to get started using your AI search solution, you'll need your URL to uh, access your AI search resource. You'll probably need your keys, or if you're using managed identity, you'll need to switch on managed identity here. Those are the two ways you can access your AI search resource is by either using the API keys or managed identity using it in an SDK. I can also see my indexes. I'll see my full text search index. I can go to my indexer and see my full text search indexer. And I can go to my data sources and see my full text search data source. And that's how you use full text search in Azure AI search. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I answer every question to help as many people as I can. If this video was helpful for you, I'd appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribe to this channel if you wanna see more content like this. As always, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.